Welcome to Film in 5D, the show about everything film with the 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammock, and this week we talk about yet another rule, the rule of thirds. Oh, did you get in a fight with some scissors? Yeah. And I won, obviously. Oh, it looked like you lost, man. Well, that's your opinion. But my hair was getting too long, so... Anyways, back to the show. While I'm sure that most of you watching this show already know what the rule of thirds is or have at least heard of it, I thought I'd take the opportunity to give you my take on the rule. And just like last week, I want to stress that rules are meant to be broken, but you must be first aware that they exist. Besides, with the rule of thirds, it's really a matter of opinion and the situation. I think the best way to describe the rule of thirds is with landscape photography, because it is arguably the most complex. Here we have an image of a tree surrounded by a lake. You may notice that the tree is right in the middle, and thus I neglected to follow the rule of thirds. Let's see how much more interesting this shot would have looked had I framed the tree on the left third. As you can see side by side, when the tree is framed on one of the thirds, your attention is naturally drawn to it. Also, it can be rather disconcerting to see the tree right in the middle. Now the reason for this is actually scientific, believe it or not. You see, since our eyes are slightly spaced out from one another, it's relatively unnatural to view something directly in front of you. Which is why, to many, an object framed on a third is much more natural to look at. Let's take a look at another photo. Here I was attempting the focus of the picture to be the house surrounded by the wilderness. Now the first thing that likely drew your attention probably wasn't the house, but more so the boulder on the right. Not only is the boulder bigger and have higher contrast, but it is also positioned on the right third, which makes it stick out a bit more. If I had framed the house on the left third, then we'd get much more balance between both the house and the boulder. As a filmmaker, we're always trying to draw the attention of our audience to something in the frame. I mean, we use things like focus, shallow depth of field, and position along the thirds to help draw the attention of our audience. Now you'll see this less in television, the reason being that for the longest time the aspect ratio for standard TV was 4x3, and thus broadcasters had to ensure that people were still within the frame. Which is why, even today, when you watch the news or talk shows, the subject is always framed directly in the middle. This is less true for some of the more cinematic shows, like ones you might find on HBO or even The Walking Dead for example, where they employ the rule of thirds with pretty much everything. Here we have the most basic grid layout to demonstrate the framing with thirds in mind. You can see there are four lines, two horizontal and two vertical, slicing the image into nine evenly sized rectangles. So far we've talked mostly about the vertical lines, which is more significant when it comes to the natural slash interesting framing. But the horizontal lines are really helpful when framing your subject from top to bottom, especially with close-ups. Here we have a still from our Matrix sketch from way back when. As you can see, Neo is framed from head to chin, top to bottom, but the main thing I want to point out is that my eyes are framed at the point where the upper third converges with the middle third. Doing this with close-ups, especially in conversation scenes or shot reverse shot sequences, will give you a much more appealing frame. But that's it for this week's episode, just wanted to quickly give some of my thoughts on one of the more basic principles for filmmaking. If you have any questions for me, you can leave a comment below or send them to me via at mentions at twitter.com forward slash Aaron Hammock. Also, follow our show's Twitter at Film FID to check out everything we're up to. Or if you're on Facebook, like our page at the link below. We'll be back next week to talk about realistic gunfire VFX. Speaking about that, did you see that uh, Holograph Tupac thing? Yeah, what about it? I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. Like, I thought we could, like, implement that into the show, maybe, like, make you a hologram, and then we get, like, a voice actor that sounds a lot like you, so then we can, like... Yeah, then we don't have to do the episode anymore. Just, yeah, exactly. We just, like, like send the stuff and put it in, and it'll do my voice and everything. Yeah. I mean, that's a good idea. We should work on that. See you next week. Welcome to Film in 5D, the show about everything film and the 5D Mark II. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? What are you doing? Is this funny listening to you? You're like, F- welcome to Film and 5D.